Dad. Right, so what are you doing today? What's your job? Um, to put some bacon logs here. Okay. Okay. Thomas, Let's what do you want? Wheelbarrow. I want a wheelbarrow. Okay, let's get you a wheelbarrow. Where are you? I'm right here. <laughs> oh, did you get up there? <laughs> How did you get up there? <laughs> Good morning. Well, today we're going to have a really detailed walk around with Nick. And he's going to explain like the plan for the ground and the trees and the whole process. Now Nick's been like the most integral person to this project so far. Everything he's done has allowed us to get access and make the building massively, massively safer. Now I've showed a lot of footage of what Nick's done, but we haven't really explained the whys and the hows and everything like that. So today's a chance to do that and you get a whole picture of the project going forward. Morning. Okay, so one of the first things we kind of did was get this driveway done. Um, so basically you lifted all the trees. Basically what we've really done is take all the dead wood off the pines. If you look at this first one that we haven't touched yet, the, the trees lose the lower limbs because the needles can't photosynthesize for the light, for food. So they basically just die back. Mm -hmm. So all we've done here is by lifting those, A, it makes it safer, and B, it gives you access so you can get bigger machinery up here, um, deliveries and things like that, without it scratching all the vehicles. Yeah, and does it make the trees healthier as well? It doesn't harm the trees. Uh, I mean, all that would happen is normally they just end up snapping off, like you see on some of these, which actually gets rot into them. Yeah. And it can cause decay to go into the actual trunks. Yeah. So we are actually trying to benefit the trees. And on the plus side, it's actually giving a better view into the woods. Yeah. I won't just say that I need to be roping. Come down, just take all the branches off, we'll get them all on the floor. Get two or three trees done. Yeah. Chip it. Yeah. Move down. Just keep working your way up till we get up to the top where the oaks are. Okay, so as you're cutting them, I'll just put, start putting them in piles ready yeah. to chip then. Drag them out. Way, then we'll just have a couple of piles of chippings. Yeah. Well, it's going to look so different, isn't it? Yeah. You're going to be proper be able to see the chateau. Just do a picture frame it. Yeah. As we've found out, as we go up there, there's some lovely red maples that we didn't realise it. Yeah. Because last year it was so dry, yeah. the trees were so stressed that any red trees will actually revert back to the natural colour of being green. Oh, right, okay. Under stress, yeah. before they start losing their leaves. So the following year they will come back to the, the colour that they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, Copper Beach do exactly the same thing. The red maples have done it. 
Um, so if we don't get as hot as summer this year, it should stay red. But mm. if we get another drought, yeah, you end up losing some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, uh, I think the perception on the vlog is that a lot of trees have been taken out. But actually, I think in this area, we've only took one out, haven't we? Yes, so far. Yeah. So this mean, is anything that was dead has come out and the overgrowth and it's just made that big difference. And all the broom. Yeah. That, that's what was predominantly in this area was just broom. Yeah, so it looked a lot thicker than it was. Yeah. But you'll see there is a lot of damaged trees because of them being so tall. You can see nicely here the work that we were doing last year kind of cutting these well what we thought were oaks but actually maple on the right and to just kind of frame the chateau and now it's all coming into leaf you can really see that shape now makes such a difference doesn't it because yeah. even just stood from here you couldn't even barely see the chateau before these are beautiful these are really nice just seeing that red colour, everything's yeah. so green, different shades of green, but just that red colour's really changed it, doesn't it? Yeah. And will these stay red the season? <laughs> They're starting to turn green as well already. So. Right, okay. So it's maybe just a flush of red at the beginning. Yeah. leaving some of the dead and decaying stuff for the insects and the bug life and the birds and the wildlife yeah which we've got in the middle here as that's rotting down insects come into it like the fell pine tree just behind us as well that was blown down in the storm you can see what's coming up here already is just brambles so we can actually manage better what's coming up in the woods yeah because it was all just so smothered wasn't it yeah so you basically sometimes have to take it back to a blank canvas to rejuvenate areas of the woodland. Yeah. Like that, that oak's died back because at the top it's had no light, but it's still trying to put out from the bottom so it's dead halfway up. Yeah. But by taking that middle one out, you allow the two either side of it to become more mature and yeah. stronger yeah. on the boundary. Taking this out, you'll end up with a better tree here. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So it's a lot more of the long game, isn't it? Yes. People forget when you're working on a forest, you're looking at at least a minimum of five years, but you're working on up to 20, 30 years' time yeah. for the trees in the future. Mm -hmm. And being by selective, you get better trees, stronger trees, yeah. and you get a mixture of young, middle, and mature trees, mm -hmm. which is what we're trying to achieve. So as part of the lifting, the last thing Cameron was doing is working further down and just lifting all these pines to get the view right in. is to get it to drop down and hopefully jump forward. I'm actually aiming for the gap between the two branches there. Eh?
Yeah, so this was the comments. last one that was taken down. I don't think I explained at the time, this was so rotten, wasn't it? Yeah, and as you see, if you come down here a bit, the top exploded on me, basically held up by the canopy above us. Yeah. Yeah, and these are the ones that are so important to take down because it's just, it all looks safe when you walk through it, but... Yeah, so yews are not really that common over here, are they? No. And they live, what, thousands of years yeah. some of them can live, yeah. can't they? And it's actually a very nice tree that's getting swamped out by very quick growing scrubby trees. Um, and so we've got the goat's wool just here, and if you look at the top, you see all the damage. They're not very long lived at all. But by opening it up, it'll give the tree a chance to grow and survive. Yeah. So this is a section, well, this needs quite a lot of work, this section, doesn't it? Because yeah. this is where the old swimming pool is. A lot of these trees around the edge of the pool are actually starting to pull it apart with the root system. Yeah, they are. We've got the well behind us that we're going to have to be careful around, just there, because they're going into it. So it's actually becoming more unstable around this area. And again, if you look through the top of the canopy, how much of it is dead? I don't think we'll be able to get some of these roots out with the um, because of the pool, unless yeah. you actually dismantle the pool and then rebuild it again. Yeah. It depends what your plans are going to be in the future for the pool. Yeah. And the other problem we get as well is the poplars. Yes, they look like the big stable trees, but unlike the oaks, the chestnuts, things like that, that have the big tap roots that go down and hold, they're surface mounted. Right. And because of the weather we're having, you've got the root system here and the water tables here, mm -hmm. so they can't get a drink Yeah, they somewhere. can't survive. The yeah. pines are struggling. We're losing a lot of pines in France for the same reason, because... They're not having a drink till we get the rains in winter, but the water table's getting so low now, yeah. it's causing major problems. And nothing we can really do about that, is there? No, it's, it's due to the climate. Clear a little area, and you've got beautiful seating areas with nice mature trees in, but as we've just seen, you've still got the younger maples that are coming through. They're going to be far enough away from the pool. Mm -hmm. So in time, they're going to shoot up. And the way things grow in this region is frightening. Yeah, so quick. Another one down recently. Fortunately, it went the right way and it's not took the wall out. Mm. But you've always got that problem that if the wind's in the opposite direction or it gets caught up and rolls across, yeah, it's going to take things out. Areas like this where we've got this old hazel, by cutting it back to about a metre height, you actually regenerate it to all the new, younger growth. Yeah. And it's a sustainable form of firewood for the chateau as well, mm -hmm. because you can keep harvesting it. If by taking it at this diameter, you only have to log it up and it's ready for the fire in a couple of years. Good form of heating, but then you get all the new regrowth and you just end up with bigger and bigger clumps of it. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a few as you look around this area in between the oaks, We've got here, all down here is all hazel. And how long will they take to regrow if you cut that at the bottom? you are looking at redoing it again about 10 years time. You take it about this, this sort of height, let the new stuff through. So we do an area one year, do an area next year, an area the year after that. Yeah. A bit like painting the fourth bridge and you can come back to the start again. Yeah. So what sort of theme like are we going for with the woodland? Obviously the top's like quite parklandish, quite open now. What about like as we get further on? How do you kind of envision envision it? What we'd like to try and do is um, create pathways through the woods so you can wander through here and have areas for seating and actually see the wildlife, the nature. Um, keeping shaded areas, trying to select better trees, but also make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. We don't want any of the dead wood falling out on people wandering around, trees falling over. Um, like these that come down in the storm, if you look, they've all rerouted. And this is what we're ending up with, is lots of trees coming back off the main yeah. trunk. It's 
falling over. So even that, it can be. This will be left for for nature in places because it's not really used for anything else. As you can see, it's just crumbling. But then you've got the young young ones coming off it. So just by thinning those out, you stop what's happening just up here where we've got the dead hangers that snaps out the top of this one. Why well, get a stiff neck? Because I spend half my life walking around looking <laughs> upwards. It's so good that we've got the boundary in now as well. Yeah. Because you can just look look through the woods now and you can just see these pink marks everywhere. And that's what you kind of spoke about um, when we're doing the walks to kind of blur that boundary between the, the forest. We can skirt the walks along the edge to make it seem bigger as well. Yeah. Are you ready? Can everyone see each other? Well, I mean, this area, it's a nice shaded area that we can see. But we've just got to thin it out slightly to find the, the safer, more stable trees. Yeah. And get rid of all, all, I mean, things like this. That's an old cherry that's recently gone over. It's still trying to blossom because it's still attached to the ground partly. It, a lot of it is preventative because you look on the floor again, you've got the maples, you get the oaks, there's ash, there's elderberry, there's all sorts coming up here. So it's just going to have to be being selective, opening the paths up, finding where we're going with the paths, finding what areas we want to use and what areas you want to leave more natural. Yeah. Because you can leave areas that are like this for the wildlife. It's good even for the winter for the hedgehogs and not chipping everything and making piles so it gives animals yeah. somewhere to yeah. go to hibernate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could introduce some fruit trees, maybe, like, along the way, stuff that's going to thrive in a woodland. Yeah. I don't know, what, gooseberries and all them sort of stuff. Yeah, do some currants and things yeah. like that. Even planting fruit trees down the path where it's a bit more open, maybe around the pool. But instead of letting them be tree trees, you can actually plant them uh, as foliage. Yeah. So plant them along the wires... So it keeps the trees at a certain height and it also puts the fruit where you can get to it. Yeah. And you can do it with a mix of all the trees. You can put the pears, the apples, cherries, plums, and just have, a, have a, a mix. Yeah, that's what we were talking about, kind of creating more natural borders. So when yeah. you bring the mill up, all the trees we cut, we can half and do post and rail or, yeah. you know, we can divide things with bushes. So make it kind of structured, but still really natural. And also trying to encourage some of the, 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 there's quite a lot of young holly in here, which is a good one for the birds coming into winter with the berries and everything else. Yeah. And it also makes good um, nesting habitat because with it being prickly, they do tend to nest in it a lot more. Yeah. So trying to encourage some of these to, to get some more life and grow. You're actually quite lucky that the, the, the different species of actual trees that are in here. And they don't need any management. <laughs> Yeah, just what kind of clear around them sort yeah. of thing. But they're, they're, they're naturally here, so they obviously want to be grown where they're growing. Yeah. You know, you plant a tree here, we hit a drought, you're going to be down here watering, but then we get the hose pipe bands and you can't collect the water to water the yeah. trees, so they end up dying. Yeah, it kind of seems like there's really different areas in here of like you say there's a yeah. patch of like where there's loads of limes here there's loads of hazel yeah we've got a nice stand of hazel in this area but you can also see on that silver birch just here where there's a lot of damage at the base of it we're we getting fungi forming if that goes over what it's going to take out yeah so all it is is management and making sure it's safe here We've got quite a lot of damage to these big pine trees. The top of this central one here snapped out and it's caused it to have about four or five 
new leaders coming off it, but there will be rock getting down the trunk. So at some point during winds, one of those has got a good chance of just snapping out. And it's like having a tree fall, but from 10, 15 metres up in the air. But we've got two very nice ones either side of it. Yeah. But what that will do is just open this bit of the canopy up, but I can bring it down through this direction <coughs> without causing too much damage to any of the other trees around here. Yeah. But if it goes naturally, it won't quite heavily thinning out because all you're going to end up with is 20 30 meter trees with nothing on them they're going to be very whippy as you can see what's happening more at the front i mean when you think what two weeks ago three weeks ago when we walked through here it was bright sunshine yeah now the canopy's for, formed it's just solid so nothing's going to really try growing on the floor now yeah because there's no light getting in here but by thinning it out it will slow the vertical growth, but help the trees fill out more. Yeah. So you end up with the side branches actually forming. But it'll also allow light in so we can get other trees that are coming up yeah. for the future. Yeah. We're actually not too far from the chateau at the moment, but you'd never believe it. But you clear around this area, it's a nice focal point to bring a walk to because just the other side of the lines is actually the chateau. I know, and you can't even see it from here, which is, that's why it makes it so disorientating for me. It's because you can never get a good fix on a point, you know. But it makes it great for the walk because you can snake it through and it yeah. looks like so much, yeah. looks so bigger. And also the terrain, how it changes. Yeah. With smooth slopes over that backside. Now we're over this side and you can really see it. You've got little rocky outcrops. It drops and and turned so you can have several different walkways some for yeah and i really like the idea of as you're on the walk you discover a seating area or a play area or a little platform for viewing you know i think that will make it so interesting but again in this area there's so much uh, brambles trying to come back up again This is when you realise how close to the chateau you are here. Yeah, all of a sudden, it just pops into view. The yew tree is just behind you that we were just looking at, and the chateau's just there. Yeah. And then you've got the big yew just there. Yeah, so Quite this was one of the oaks. oaks that we took out right by the yew, uh, mainly because it was leaning over, but yeah, it's rotten all the way through, isn't it? Yeah. And I hope it doesn't go too far up so I can get it on the mill. I mean, we'll still be able to use the size of it, but we'll get something out of it. Often, when you get the ends of the trees dying back, it can often be a problem in the ground. The tips of the roots dying back is mimicked by the crown. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah. Yeah. And it's also going to be keeping an eye out for fungi as well around the base of these trees because there's one that's causing rot in the oak roots, but the tree looks totally healthy. Yeah. Uh, I took a big one down once and I was like, the expert said it had got to come out because it was dangerous. It was all solid wood until I got to about two metres from the floor and it was like marshmallow in the middle. The roots were rotting away. Yeah, you can just never tell, can you? No. You can't see what's happening inside the trees. Yeah, so what was the whole idea between cutting like the top of the lime tree? Well, the idea was just to bring its height down to try and preserve the trees. I mean, the French are very big on pollarding anyway, Yeah. Um, which is what we want to do. And then every few years, go back up and take it back down to try and keep a nice big mature tree without the height. Yeah. We've got a nice shaded seating area under it now because we've kept the limbs so we've got the canopy. Mm -hmm. But you haven't got the danger of the rot. And it's very rare you see a lime tree fall, up, fall down, but you do get a lot of problems with them snapping out. Yeah. Yeah, the limbs are very heavy and sprawling, aren't they? Yeah, it stood up to the winds before at the height it was. So now it's only half its height. It's going to be a lot safer and last for longer. Yeah. So back here is where we've done the most work, really. And that's because the part of the original landscaping was this yew and the two limes. And it was so overgrown before. So we, that's why we took this one down to kind of 
save that U and then we've taken everything in front down to expose the view that the Chateau used to have. It basically started here. If I remember rightly, we had a path that was from about there to there wide. Everything yeah. was growing in front of the chateau. Then there was like a walkway round on the original photo. And then you couldn't get in there. But I don't think there was anything above about that sort of diameter tree. No, it looked a lot more dense than it was, didn't it? Yeah, and, but most of it, as you see what's coming back up now, was brambles and broom. Yeah. And there was a lot of dead trees in there as well. Yeah. That's the root of the tree that was all the way over there. And with the winds and with your neighbour taking the forest out on that side, the problem was the chance of it coming down into the building. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of dangerous trees here that you had to take out and they were just leaning right over the chateau. And a lot was just dead. Yeah. And plus we found kind of the original boundary of all this laurel as well which is what I'm trying to get to regenerate and then we could get the height of it down and actually make a nice hedge between. Well, this has gone over, it's died. Fortunately, it went that way. Yeah. But if you turn around, you'll see how close you are to the building. Exactly. Yeah, the trees just above that bit. The plus side is a lot of it really supported on that one. Yeah. Fortunately. See here is the worst bit. The trouble is this floor's a shot now, aren't they? Yeah. The first one's to clear some of this out of the way so we've got room to work. Yeah. I'll just come in with a saw and just nip these down. You're right at the top of it more interesting. <laughs> You're dreading this now, aren't you? Okay, okay.
never seen bugs running through before. It's definitely on it, it's growing into it here. Yeah. I don't think them beams are that thick. No. Not really. <laughs> I won't lie, I don't know how wobbly it feels with you up there, but it looks fucking wobbly from down here already. It feels very wobbly up here. <laughs> the beauty is if it goes over at the moment, it can only touch the corner of the building. Yeah, assuming the corner of the building stays where it is, yeah. Well, first person to be on the second floor for a while. <laughs> yeah, I've never worked inside on a tree before. On the patio. Okay, uh, let me just move the drone. Ah. I can feel that on the floor. I can feel that on the floor. Yeah. Can you not drop that bit? What I might do is get down to that this. Yeah, I can feel it here as you're cutting. Yeah. It's yeah, I can pull that down, yeah. Lifting.
Hold it there! So I think the most dangerous tree that was taken out of here was actually the one inside. Yes. And that was the first thing you did here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the very first tree. But again, you'll see with the roots where it ended up falling out the window, how nothing was going down. Yeah. It was all surface rooted. Yeah. Which is another problem with these goat swillers. And as you were stood there and I was in the tree, you could feel the floor lifting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was so scary. You was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually a lot more dangerous than we thought because it was really being held up by the building and the beams the, and these stuff. These two bottom beams was holding it up and it was on the corner of the wall up there. In here is root structure that stopped this floor going through. Yeah. Over time. Then you look on the original photos from the other week that we saw of the chateau ground just before the fire mm -hmm. how there was no vegetation down in front of the chateau yeah and then look at the size of the trees it's grown up in the last 20 25 years it really brings home how fast things grow in this region yeah Hopefully that's given you all a good idea of the plans going forward and the work we've done so far. It's a massively ongoing thing, but little by little, this place is coming back. And see ya tomorrow.